Hi, I'm Victor, and you are massive. Because it takes a force to change your speed. We define mass as an object's resistance to acceleration. An object with more mass will need a greater force to make it accelerate. The relationship between force, mass, and acceleration is described by Newton's second law of motion. This way of thinking of mass is incredibly useful. If we know the force on an object and its mass, we know its acceleration. And if we know the masses of two objects, we can calculate the gravitational attraction between them. This is called classical mechanics, and it treats mass as an intrinsic property or a defining feature of matter. But how do we know that's true? How do we know mass is an intrinsic property of matter and not the result of something else entirely? To answer that, we need to look closer at matter. Atoms are made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. The protons and neutrons are in turn made up of quarks. Quarks cannot be broken down any further, so we call them fundamental particles. These are the fundamental particles that make up everything we know. Here they are, neatly arranged in a table. But the behavior of all these particles is accurately described by the standard model of particle physics. This theory describes particles as vibrations in a field. You can think of a field simply as a property of space. The electron is a vibration in the electron field, the up quark a vibration in the up quark field, and so on. Each particle is assigned a value for things like charge and spin. But when we try adding mass into the equations, they break down. We get nonsensical answers. What's going on here? The equations that govern these subatomic particles treat them as if they're massless. But we know they must have mass because they, well, they make up you and me, right? Hmm. We need to explain mass differently. Let's try creating another field. Instead of giving it a zero value everywhere except for the excitations, let's give it a uniform value everywhere. This means that it permeates and affects all of space equally. We've just created the Higgs field. And here's where things get sticky. Imagine this jar contains a little piece of the universe. It is filled with the Higgs field. When particles move through the Higgs field, they interact with it. A particle that interacts more will feel a greater resistance to acceleration. Remember that this is how we defined mass. So mass is not an intrinsic property of matter. Instead, particles gain mass when moving through the Higgs field. Just like the electron is an excitation in the electron field, the Higgs boson is an excitation of the Higgs field. When it was discovered in 2012, it provided direct proof for the existence of the Higgs field. And it got Francois Anglaire and Peter Higgs the Nobel Prize for Physics. So now we know how the fundamental particles get their mass. And you get your mass from the fundamental particles, right? Well, it turns out that only about 1% of your mass comes from the Higgs field directly. To understand this, we need to have a look at the proton. It's made of three quarks, but the three quarks only make up around 1% of its mass. So where does the 99% of the mass come from? Energy. The theory of special relativity teaches us that mass and energy are interchangeable. This just means that if an object has more energy, it will also have a greater resistance to acceleration, as if it had more mass. We convert between energy and mass using E equals mc squared, where E is energy, m is mass, and c is the speed of light. This equation tells us that a small bit of mass is equal to a huge amount of energy. While these three quarks don't have much mass, there's a lot of energy holding them together. That's where the missing 99% comes from, and it's where most of your mass comes from too. Most of your mass comes from the energy holding quarks together in your protons and your neutrons. Only 1% of your mass comes from the fundamental particles themselves, which get their mass from the Higgs field. But without this 1%, if quarks could go at the speed of light, they wouldn't be able to form protons. There would be no atoms, no stars, no galaxies, no black holes. And no you.